Hi, I'm Drew, a drag queen living in LA with my husband Curtis, my dog JB, and plenty of gall. I'm Grant, former pastor, and I live in Florida with my wife, my four kids, and a pretty neat shirt. Drew still hasn't told me what he really feels about it. I think he loves it. I think he likes it, actually. Yeah, we can come. Well, we'll circle back he to does. that. On this he week's episode, I learn what true persecution looks like. Realize that as a gay guy growing up in the church, <laughs> I didn't do it right. In, in this episode, I stay pretty cool. I keep it together. I'm real chill on this one everyone get ready to see grant mad enjoy the episode it'll be fine hi welcome to 20 window i'm drew and i'm gay and i'm grant and i'm not hey brother how are you oh i'm so good thank you so much for asking we are coming to the close of another the business mother-in-law stay Um, ah your mother-in-law she has been with us almost a full month. He and me. And we say adieu. We bid adieu. Sorry adieu. to suddenly speak French out of nowhere. Thank you. But I did read You're Madeline. You're classy like that. Yeah. We, she goes home on Wednesday. But you want to hear a plot twist? Yeah, I'm ready. We're going with her. Are you really? We're going with her. We're going to fly back with her. And then this weekend, this coming weekend, as at time yep. of filming and listening, if you're uh, yeah, uh, for day one listener. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, or we're going to New York because you know they live in. She's from Philadelphia, and so New York mm-hmm. is very close. I didn't by. know if you're so keeping that gonna... secret or not, but you're going to put that. No, you're gonna it's put her not business a out secret. There. We. I don't think I've said it anywhere, but we are going to see O'Mary on Broadway, and I know. Cole I'm Escola has added us on the list to come backstage after the show and say hello. They're so funny. Their appearances on late night television are the only reason late night television matters. I used to sneak so watch funny. their show, Jeffrey and Cole Casserole, when we were in college. It was on Logo, and it was just like a little skit show. And I used to How'd sneak you watch, watch Logo it. at the Christian College. It wasn't blocked. They let that in? No, I'm sure it was just at home. I'm sure it's just okay. whenever I was at home. By but the way, our Christian college did that. They blocked all kinds of shit. It was They didn't block the cool. right stuff, though, because there was still a ton of local news on, and that is evil. And ours no, is but I'm really excited. I've, I've seen Cole live, but I've never met them, and mm-hmm. they enjoy mm-hmm. IMHO, and so now it just feels like... We were actually, we were out to dinner last night in Silver Lake, sorry to brag, and I didn't pay for it. So I got two glasses of wine. Because it was free to me. What's what's Silver Lake? Is it nice? What's Silver Lake? Yeah, it's like a little hipstery, up and coming ish area. Uh, I mean, it's been bragging for a long time. Yeah. And cool. But the server goes, Have you ever heard of Cola Scola? And I was like, I'm going to see them this weekend. And then she was like, I'm just, I'm a huge fan of theirs. And your your humor, I don't know, you just remind me so much of them. And I was like, yes, that is correct. You're what becoming you're saying one. A cold is singularity is happening. And then and then my mother-in-law, bless her heart, she was your trying. But I said, I was like, yeah, we're actually gonna, we're going to see them on Broadway this weekend. We're so excited. And, and my mother-in-law goes, well, and you know who he is, right? And pointed at me. Oh no! Why? Why would she do that? And I was like, Diane, no, Mama, no, no. Mama, no. I was like, I appreciate it. I was like, I'm very niche. I'm very niche. Like the only people who yeah. know me know me. Okay, I'm very niche. Stop it. Yeah. And you know that's actually true for everybody, Drew. The only people that know other people are the people that know them. That's We're not all true. Niche, if you that's think about not it. True. No. What does that mean? Of course, it's true. It's I'm a I'm a little further than that. Okay, there are people who know all about my bad relationship with my father, and I don't even know what they look like. So that's, if that's not famous. I messaged Cole and I told them the story, and I was like, I just thought that was funny. Excited to see you. And then they wrote back, Oh my God, life is so beautiful, and it's so true. <laughs> is that I'm sorry? Is that, I'm gonna I'm geeking. Is that out. supposed to be funny? Or is that like, a, was what? that a very sincere, was that a sincere comment? Life is so beautiful. That's a Cola Scola comment. Because it's never very it funny. It's yeah, very that's funny. that's Cola Scola. Oh my God, life is so beautiful. <sighs> I'm so jealous. You're going to have a great time. I'm excited I'm geeking for you. out. I'm so I'm really excited. thrilled. I can go meet Mickey Mouse any day I want. 
not to brag, but I don't even have to call ahead or anything. I can just go stand in line. So, oh shit, earthquake. Oh, God. Yeah. Oops, earthquake. That's Sorry. what happens when you oh, no. get too confident. God the shakes pride. your house. The pride. Speaking of too confident, <laughs> oh, where are you going? You turtling up right now? Can I be you honest with y'all? For those of you who are watching this and not listening to it, I know that okay. I wear hats all the time. Okay? Yeah. Too often. It's, it, I do. Because I wear wigs professionally. And so I'm mm. more comfortable when there's something on top of my head. You know? I only wear them recreationally. <laughs> God, Drew, you got the black lung? Oh. I'm sorry. I have such an incredible mic, too. I know it's picking up every cough and every tickle. No, but I got a haircut. I was so excited. And I forgot that it's been a while since I've had a haircut. So I said, well, remember what I said we wanted to do? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he like shaved the sides of my head. It just it looks... um, I have My head looks pointier. I... I, uh, Have you ever seen a pencil? You ever seen a pencil? Show it to everybody. No, I'm good. No, Pop no, it no. off. Join us on our Patreon. You got it. Yeah. Big reveal. Big reveal. Big on reveal Patreon. on Patreon. Only Sometimes for the I Olsen will do tier. that on IMHO's Patreon, where at the end of an episode, I'll take the wig off slowly and I put it at the very, very end of the Patreon only episode. And sometimes people catch up. Sometimes they don't. So watch all the way to the end. What Drew is saying is that IMHO is like Marvel movies were for 10 years or whatever. In, the, in that they're, they're su- superheroes. Yes, that's what I say. I meant that there was extra content at the end, but yeah, yeah, you're a superhero oh. in a way. Okay. In a way sure. to yourself. S- speaking of of hurting yourself, mm-hmm. I'm not great at transitions. Been there. Uh, it, that's so, why my best friend is trans, because I'm not good at trans. So I got one that literally like that's a good reference. It's a whole thing. That's a good reference. So my arm is much better. Thank you to everyone who's asked. I do have oh, a pretty fuck. solid bump that won't go away. What Gross. do you think that is? Do you think like uh, that's cancer, bone? Probably. Do you think it's bone? Anyway, or cancer. The point is, my body's healing better than ever. Doing great. Went to my youngest football game yesterday. Sitting on the sidelines, supporting the young man. It was your youngest football game. My youngest football game. Oh, got Wit. It. Okay, I'm back. It was Wit's game. Wit's the running You're back. Mom talk. Yeah. He's on a run. Up, running up the sideline, runs right in front of us. Exciting. This little kid thinking he's he's going to play in the NFL one day, instead of just pulling Witt's flag, completely dives and wraps him up, like tackles him right in front of us. And when he does, that kid spins around, like his whole body is just like flailing. And he kicks with his cleat right under my knee cap like right where the <gasps> shin like kind of meets the top of your knee yeah 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 yeah. i thought i was gonna die it hurt so bad and was i it was the like other kid that kicked you or what yes it was the other kid and he's just like i don't think <sighs> like he knows he hit me but i don't think he realized you know so he's just laying there so i'm trying to check on him i'm like hey buddy you okay you all right and he's like uh uh-huh. and i was like all right get back in there because i want to react to how bad my leg hurts but i don't want the kid right. to feel bad so once he Even turns around he then i'm like personally attacked your family he tried yeah, to kill went, your son he went after he tackled you. with illegally and then maimed me and i am literally i'm i'm limping i'm limping so everywhere. there's like an fight. old man flight or friend so your your reaction to someone attacking you is to befriend them yeah okay buddy hey buddy did did i hold your hand with my you know if you're trying if you're trying to rob me you must really need it that's all right you you know what i barely worked for this anyway so i just want everyone to know i don't know how much longer i can do this podcast i don't know how much longer i have in this world i am getting do you think that maybe this is god (laughs) Have you thought oh, about that? I should that? probably stop laughing. Fuck. Yeah. He's going to take no. your laugh next. That's what he That's what he is. He loves revenge. He's a revenge. vengeful God. He's a vengeful and a jealous God, which mm-hmm. is in the scriptures, by the way. So anyway, yeah, like I don't know. I'm not... <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Uh, we'll be right back. I just, I love doing the podcast. I might not be around much longer. That's all I'm trying to tell Good. people. I'm just trying to Goodbye. prepare people. Well, I all feel right. like we've we've done what? A hundred episodes at this point. Uh, Fifteen. Go ahead. And 
I feel like we've already done all the catching up we need to. I feel like I kind of get your whole vibe. Time and, to check uh, out. Let's go back to just kind of like checking in a couple times a year. Yeah, I, I'm kind of tired of seeing you wearing a hat all the time. And <laughs> um, my guy, so I, okay, I'd like it's to my get haircut out. guy. I love my little haircut guy. He's this little tiny little haircut guy, and he's from Armenia, and he's so nice. And I get all to teach of this him things. Made up. It's not. This sounds like you get really high, you and then you hallucinate yes. a little guy, and you end up cutting your hair yourself. Okay, and then number you wake one, that up. sounds like a great idea, and I will one I day. I think that's what's happening. But number two, I got really high the other night, and I bid on a Ray Bolts t-shirt, and I won. <laughs> and so that is coming to my house. I didn't even remember doing it, and then I got an email that said, it's yours. And I was like, what is... It's a Ray Bolts t-shirt that says, thank you for thank giving, you to, for the giving Lord. to the Lord. That's and all on the it back should it say. says, I am so glad you gave. I am a life. ichthus. That was changed. Anyway. I no, love but it. I get to teach hey. my little, I get to teach my little Armenian haircut man a lot of things. Like he doesn't know anything. He knows nothing. What is that? What's that 30 rock? Racist. That's racism. No, what was it? Jenna's talking about, um, Oh, yeah, that sounds like some sexual advice I'd give to Cosmo. And Tina's like, Tina, uh, what's her name? What's Tina, Tina Fey's character? Tina Fey. What's her, no, what's her character's name? <laughs> Liz. And Liz is like, no, Cosmo gives you sex advice. And she goes, no, Cosmo's my 17-year-old neighbor. He doesn't know <laughs> anything. This is so fun. Anyway, so I get to teach that him things. And I taught him what a drag queen was. I taught him what kink meant. When you when you say you got to work out the kinks, I taught him what that meant. And I was having a good oh. time. He did reveal to me that he's also learning from Joe Rogan. And I do believe that it was the Joe Rogan of it all that caused this haircut. When I think about the Venn diagram of podcasts, we've got to be almost, the, our circles have got to be exactly the same with Joe Rogan. Like, I I, I don't I don't mean we're just yeah, a little. I chew gum. I think for energy. We're, yeah. yeah. We're made and for I don't it. know. I was really bummed. Flat. And I know I'm not surprised. I was not surprised. Okay. I want that to be on the record. But yeah. I was bummed because do you do you watch any of Action Bronson's videos on YouTube? Maybe. I don't know. Oh, I watch a lot of Grant. YouTube. Maybe I do. He's this, I don't, I don't he's this white rapper. So it's already starting off great. Okay. And yeah. He has a show called Fuck That's Delicious, and he just goes around the world trying food, and it is so... I'm Googling him. ...fun to watch. Oh! Like, I know who he is. I've never watched yes, him. Yes. He... It's I've so never fun. Watched him. He genuinely loves everything he tries, and it's just fun to see him go into these five-star restaurants, because he'll do, like, Hole in the Walls, huh. but then sometimes he'll do, like, really expensive restaurants, and he's sometimes like, he'll oh, make what the, the fuck is that? Ha <laughs> ha, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> and the chef's like, yeah, and it's got my memories of childhood in it, of course. And right. anyway, I love him. But today or yesterday, he posted a video of him working out with Joe Rogan, which just doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I'm just bummed. I get it. You can't I take Action it. Bronson from me, though. You can't. You can take Chick-fil-A for a long time, but you can't have Although, Action Bronson. Can I say, still haven't had Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. but they did introduce a new pimento cheese spicy chicken sandwich, and I have thought about it. And a banana pudding about milkshake. It. Also, they announced they a, a banana pudding milkshake. Oh, I my I can't have God. it because my insides will become my outsides if I drink milk, but do you I'm know they also- I'm not lactose intolerant. Isn't that weird? Are you not? Why are you? No. Huh. I know, it's a straight I drink, thing. I could drink milk. I could eat cheese. Which not, is pretty gay shitting. when you think about it. You drink it. Oh, you're drinking milk. That's gay. Listen, I don't know. Not straight but from the tap. Chick-fil-A. That's gay. Drinking out of a bottle. If you drink straight mm. from the teat, that's straight. That's different. Uh, Chick-fil-A yeah. announced a family-friendly streaming service. They're going to have their own Chick-fil-A streaming service. No joke. That's a real. That's a real okay. thing that's happening. I don't know what what's going to be on show? it. I, family <gasps> oh, friendly. It's going to be Action Bronson trying out all their food. Fuck. It's got to be family friendly. This no, fucking he can't talk cheese. like that. Nope. Fuck. He can't talk like that. Uh, no, nope. uh, won't work. Uh, your be family, a Chick -fil -A your, Action your family says fuck. Your kids said fuck the other day. <laughs> My so, oldest. Listen, so I called him the other day. No he, he did it. He did it two days ago. I walked by his his uh, room and he was playing video games. And I hear him in there going, "What the." fuck is happening and i was like hey buddy fair why don't we get off the video games listen and get man. back into school 
You get, and and get why do we get the prayer drugs, into schools? Get away from the Ian crowd. Get Ian close crowd, to God. Get close to God. But no, he. Um, I just told him I was like, look, man, the word's fine. However, what I'm concerned about is you building a habit of saying that. And mm-hmm. in your life right now, there are so few places where it's appropriate to talk like that. So, like, let's rein it in, man. Uh, but we went to a soccer game last night, the Orlando City Football Club, which was Ooh. super fun. I know. Oh, I have, yeah. I, I've only ever been once, and we brought the kids, and they were bored out of their minds. This was in 2017, and I was like, this fucking sucks. But we went last night and sat in the fan section where it's standing room only, and we went with people who really cared, and you just drank the whole time. And it's a blast. That. It's so fun. But one of the things they do, and I'm, I told Angela I want to bring Max and not tell him. But when it happens, be like, look, son, these are your people. Is whatever team they're playing, we were playing Atlanta last night, they just chant, fuck Atlanta. Like that's the main chant the whole night is fuck sure. Atlanta. And then they call the, right. the refs assholes. And like everyone's chanting it the kids are chanting it the old people are chanting it. it's very very egalitarian and so i i told angel i just want to bring max and just when it happens be like go ahead son it's okay you can do that here and just chant fuck atlanta with my son doesn't that feel florida it does it's very florida did you mute yourself by accident again i did grant you do that every time we record it's a little it's a touch sensitive it's nice uh, anyway, is it nice? All right. It happens a lot. Is it that keeps nice? messing up. It's not doing nice? it when I want to. Stop being okay. like this. Yeah, go put on another hat. So, I I want to get to it. I want to get to why we're here today. Okay. And while we're here today, I'm just going to show you a TikTok actually to help explain. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to show you a couple of TikToks. Is this because I don't watch the ones you send me, so you wait until we're filming, so I have to watch them? Do you not watch the TikToks I send you? I do. I do. Here's the thing. Can you see this? Can you see how many Dear God, messages Drew, I why? have? Why do you have so many unread messages? Because I don't I have zero unread messages. like it. I don't like it. I don't like interacting with people. I don't like them knowing I'm alive. I don't like it. Drew, this is a problem. This is like a... I know. This is like a real problem. This is like a therapy problem. That's why I'm in therapy. Well, it's not the only reason, but I'm in therapy. But that's why I started the Adderall is like I'm starting this journey of trying to address these problems. Has it helped? Has Adderall helped? helped? It's helped a lot with just getting tasks done. It has not helped me with communicate. With your text messages. No, no. Damn. Yeah. I will let my I will let my email inbox get out of hand, but my messages, I can't stand the notification. I've got to clear the notification. Yeah. I, I can't I think have it's more, the red dot. I think it's more just that when, okay, when, when I first wake up in the morning, okay, and I get my first sip of coffee, okay, I, sorry, I slipped into my Kamala. I get very, yeah, that was a good very Kamala. excited and very communicative. So for about mm-hmm. 20 minutes a day, I'm going to respond to you as you write to me. But if you don't hit me up in those 20 minutes, guess what? I'm moving on. <laughs> okay. That's a good Kamala, Drew. I don't like I to compliment you. Ever, Isn't that weird? But that's it's really it's something good. I recently discovered. Thank you so much. You should, um, but now that do she's black, drag, I can't. I can't dress up. Well, as you her. could well, do. She just yes, you she can. Just you can dress black. up like her. You can't. You don't remember do the makeup. I heard it but, on the news. I heard it on the uh, news. Yeah, I, I did hear that she was. I mean, she was Indian forever, and now forever. And then suddenly, now she's black. She's black. Okay. Suddenly, I want to show you a couple of TikToks. I think you'll immediately get what we're talking about today are you this is fun ready yeah and have and tell me tell me like immediately if you've seen these we're still gonna watch them they're very short they're tiktoks but tell me immediately if you've seen them here it is <laughs> they're so stupid have you seen these i, I haven't seen this one but yes i i, I know what you're showing me oh, face man. to right face forward Oh, God. Okay. Sorry. One more. This, this, do you want to explain it to the people who are listening? Let me show one more and then we'll explain it. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, keep yeah, guessing. People, Guess in the people comments. listening, keep guessing what you think we're watching. This is a five second one. So. Steady trying to find the motive. <sighs> Why do what I do? This episode we're recording right now is going to be hard. It's going to be hard for me. I'm I'm already angry. I was angry putting these together. And if you could see my notes, I'm very angry about it. But mm. let me explain what these TikToks what are. What do you do when you get angry? What's your what's your go-to action? I try to push it down and then I mm. go coach uh, kids sports. Whoa. Okay. So I can <laughs> tell worked. you've been taking notes from our childhood. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> The videos we just watched, for everyone yeah. listening, audio only, it's got to be maddening because it's been so long since we played it. It's them. been so long. I wonder what you um, think it is. <laughs> they are, Say it right now, in your car. Wrong. That was uh, right. They are, they are Christian Grant, persecution Grant, before videos. You, before, oh, you said it. I can cut it out. No, I'm just kidding. I was just trying to fuck with the people who oh, are driving their cars it, into walls it. right now. I got yes, it. We are talking Ooh, about persecuting Christians, and we don't do it enough. And so we're going to give the, you five so, hot tips and tricks on so how to persecute Drew, a Christian. Drew mentioned explaining to his barber what kinks are, um, but we're talking mm -hmm. about a different type of kink. There's nothing that gets a Christian harder than the persecution kink. Um, yeah. And so it has been, it's, it's in our blood. So the videos we just watched was, uh, us, I'm assuming a very sweet Gen Alpha, maybe, do you think the first one? Gen Alpha? I don't know. Gen Alpha's not aging well. Pretend. Pretend. What the fuck? Whoa. What am I doing? How'd I do You're this? You're exploding. Grant. How'd I do that? That was super gay. <laughs> I think it's your shirt. <laughs> do you like this shirt? Primark just opened here. I got it at Primark. Do I like this shirt? That is such an interesting question. Join us over on you Patreon like to hear my thoughts. I like it a lot. I, no, I've gotten so many compliments on it's it. It's very dad. It's very Florida dad. It's a good Is Florida it? dad shirt. Yes. I've gotten so yeah. many compliments. Primark, I was $7. Watching, okay. I've been watching, sorry. I'm so sorry go to ahead. everyone driving no, their ahead. cars into walls. Go ahead. But while my mother-in-law has been here, we've been watching a lot of Hotel Inspector with Alex Polizzi. And she is this yeah. hotelier that comes in and helps. Anyway, she's wonderful. But like, w w she's been very busy. She's had a very busy life. And so her she hasn't had time to take care of her skin. And that's not her fault. That's not her fault. <sighs> Ooh, yeah, that's and rough. she was, this episode that we were watching, I don't know how old it is, but this episode that we were watching, uh, she says to the woman working behind the counter, but you're 40, darling, you're 40. And then... She goes, and I'm not saying that like it's anything bad. I'm 43. And I went, ooh. She's three years older than me at that point. Should we it put was, a picture up? I immediately. No, it. she's beautiful. I love her. Did, but is she the youngest looking 43 year old I've ever seen? No. What's her name? But it, it's that Alex Polizzi. But it's that sudden realization. Or like when you're watching a movie and they say the character's age and the character is your age, but Ooh, the actor yeah. is 75. Alex, it's very, just... very pretty, very, very much in the sun. No. Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, no. she did a lot of sun. No, she's no, no, Italian. No. She's, she's not 43. She was born in she 71. Was. She was at this episode that I was watching. That's how time works. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I always, anyway. you know, I always think when that, when I have that moment where someone's like my age or older and they look a lot older, I just feel happy that she's just 53, Grant. Where'd you get 71? Look at the Google, Wikipedia. Google says that she's 53. Do the, brother, what do you think I said? She said was Google, born Wikipedia. in 71, 1971, which oh, would I make thought her you said 53. she's 71. I was like, oh, I don't think so. I knew I should have done this podcast with Amanda. She looks great for 71. <laughs> I, it's truly. not too late, Grant. Give our sister a call right now. Live call Amanda. Send me your number okay. and I'll call her. Did you know that when you age, you age in spurts? Did you know that? You don't age no. slowly over time. So I was reading about that recently that that it's kind of like you, you like like you have growing pains, like you have like growth spurts as a kid. You have age spurts the rest of your life. So like you'll just all of a sudden age. That's why like haven't you seen some people you haven't seen in a while and you're like, holy shit. Like they just. I, uh, yeah, Grant, I that makes me want to kill myself. So I would love for us to just keep going with whatever we were talking about. Persecuting Christians. 
Are you, have you hit an age spurt? I That's feel what like I'm saying. It, it makes me feel good because I don't years. feel like I've hit yes. an age spurt. Really? Where? Why? What? How? Your face? Look at, yeah. You don't think no. I look old? No. No, I not know. at all. I was just doing that so the comments could say it. You okay, son so of a Christians, bitch. Christians, you they, son of a bitch. All right, so, speaking so of, I was, okay, speaking of so Jesus, I was the describing, of a I was describing, look, I'll make fun of Jesus all day long. You leave Mary out of this. I was That's describing, true. she was a victim. God put a baby okay. in her belly. Exactly. She you didn't do consent. anything. She didn't she consent. Was she was a, a teenager. She just had okay, a little so anyway, baby in her belly. The video we just watched was mm. a, I think, Jen Alpha. She's very nice. That She looks like she's a very nice person wearing some killer jean shorts. And she was pretending to be in a police lineup holding her Bible. And the caption read, when they make Christianity illegal. The next video we watched was a girl sitting in the back. Again, seems very nice. I could only see her face. Um, so I don't know if she had some sort of weapon in her hand. I don't know. Maybe the, the sword of the spirit. <laughs> that's what the Bible's called. In oh, the that's Bible. why she was it's in the good police joke. car. It's a good joke. Oh, um, got it. Okay. But she, same thing when when they make Christianity illegal. So she's back. She's in the back of a police car, or whatever. Um, and it. so there is this Christian kink where they're we're all persecuted, and I do want to in a minute just show you a longer clip from a pastor that I think will give us all the talking points we need about this. But okay. I want to ask you, so mm -hmm. the, where it comes from is church. And so I want to ask you, Drew, what do you remember from our church experience growing up, the persecution kink? How did how do you remember it from our, our childhood? It was a, le obviously, it's a less drastic version of a martyr. And there was nothing holier than someone dying for the Lord, than someone believing and loving so much that you yeah. die. That is, I mean, that, is, like, I know we've already talked about it on the podcast, but like the girl Columbine. getting shot at Columbine, even yeah. though they made that up and she didn't actually say, I believe in God and got shot. It, she was a hero. Maybe she should I've, have said, I believe in God. Sorry to victim blame, but but <laughs> change what your was words, she saying? bitch. Change, what were you, you know? And exactly what hey, were you what saying she, to the gunmen? What were you saying? And what were you saying yeah. to the gunmen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, obviously what happened to her was awful, no, but tragedy, not awful. from my point of view as a kid. Band guns. Because it was, that was it. Free ticket to heaven. And as kids being raised in a place where you're constantly being told that every moment of every day, you could fall out of favor with God. God could suddenly stop liking you. It's, so yeah. I, I was jealous, obviously not jealous that she died, but I was jealous that she got to go to heaven. There was no question. Well, she got shot. So all of the doubts in her head, like that got has shot nothing out to do of her with head. It. It, they it, got shot know, out of her head and shot her right into heaven. And it was, yeah. it's even more like insidious than her. that. Yes, that's 100% true. But it's even more insidious than that. It's not just that, that we were led to believe that we could fall out of favor with God at any moment. Because any moment. What, what they would teach any us thought. was once saved, always saved. Right. Like if you're mm -hmm. if you become a Christian, that's it. You're in no matter what you can backslide, brother. You can backslide. But once you're in, you're always in. And here's the insidious part about that, because one of the things they'd always say is, well, you're in if you know you're in. And remember what our pastor mm -hmm. used to say? You can you can know with beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so yeah. the the idea what they would say is if you have any doubts whether or not you're a Christian or not, you're you may not be. Then you're and not. so, yeah. so like we would worry about it. My youth pastor said, or I guess our former youth pastor used to say, you should know the, the time. Deadline. Yes. The time in the day <laughs> that you, that you became a Christian. If you don't know the time in the day, then you're giving the devil a foothold to just put more doubt in your life. And you may not even be a Christian because you don't know the fucking time. That's like saying, Drew, do you remember the time in the day that you fell in love with Curtis? I don't mean your first date. I mean, the moment you fell in love with him. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're fucking my analogy up. Oh, well, you I, remember the yes. moment you felt like the moment you went from not love to love. Yeah. I had just come. And oh, okay. All right. Cool. 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 Thanks for saving the analogy. I looked in his eyes. Mm. Okay. Cause gross. I got a little Stop. cum in his eyes and gross. that made Stop. me feel bad. And I said, well, I Stop. must love okay. him. Okay. Listen. Oh, oh sorry. God. Mm -hmm. Unsubscribe from my own podcast. That would be like saying, well, Drew, if you can't name me the moment that you know, that you know, that you know, this was the moment then you don't actually love Curtis. 
And that's what they were telling us about our relationship to God. Except if you don't love Curtis, you don't burn an eternity forever. Um, but if you don't love God, well, I got some news. I don't not know. Be Curtis great. has threatened that he has he has an inside insider's knowledge and he knows what happens after death. It's oh. not just that heaven and hell doesn't exist. It's that only hell exists. Okay, <laughs> that's it. We're all going. There's what? no saving yourself. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what if that were real? And what if yeah. what if there was a religion around that? Like, hey guys, yeah. I, we've got some news. Yeah. You do continue after this life. And there is no horrifying. heaven. It's horrible. There is a hell. We're all going there. And all of their saints, like all of the carvings in their churches or whatever, are just everyone suffering. Like it's just yeah. the worst. It never ends. The worst thing ever. And so, like every every uh, you come in, you have to you just drink water the whole time. They're like, drink it while you can, guys. We don't know. Like the minute you die, there's no more of this. You sit so in a it. giant baptismal because <laughs> just they to stay know, cool, just, just to, to stay, stay cool because cool they know that yeah. you won't have that later. Oh my gosh, I want to start that yeah. religion. Join us on our Patreon Go for if it. you'd like to start our religion, our hell religion. TM TM TM. I own fifty one percent of this religion. So, 51. Drew, do you remember the book Jesus Freaks? Yes. Do you yes. remember that came out? Of course. Um, would you like to explain to the people what Jesus Freaks is, where its origin? Okay, so the song, first of all, DC Talks. Was on MTV. What would people think if they hear that I'm a Jesus ring? What would people, what would people do, do if they find, if they find that, that is true? I don't really care. So... They, do you remember the rap? They did it, right? Yeah, do you remember no, the rap? No, I don't remember the rap. I don't. Go ahead, Grant. Can I? This is your moment. Yeah, this is your moment. Go for it. There was a man with a tat on his big fat belly. It wiggled around like marmalade jelly. It took me a while to catch what it said because I had to match the rhythm of his belly with my head. Jesus saved is what it raved in a typical tattoo green. He stood on a box in the middle of the city and he claimed he had a dream. What will people think if they hear that I'm a Jesus freak? What will wow. people do? Thank you. Grant, that was incredible. Thanks, man. You really Thanks. should have been a white rapper. It's in Fuck. my heart. It's deep in yeah. my heart. Uh, yeah, so that was their song. You're right, DC Talk. And, and then they made a book. Ahead. And the book mm -hmm. was, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you having it. I remember it being brown. Yeah. And it was, it was like, like it was really cool looking. looking. It was cool. And the, the edges of the pages were all like, like mm -hmm. raw and like ripped. This up. was yeah. like early aughts okay picture it the towers yeah. had fallen we want something a little more distressed wait wait picture it everyone close your eyes the towers have fallen oh it's yeah good, now i get it i mean now i know I that it. like saying 9 11 is hilarious i get that objectively it is i'm sorry it is it's just the culture but it's a really good time stamp that. instead of saying yeah, turn of is. the century 9 11 immediately puts everyone at attention like wait what the fuck oh yeah, yeah i yeah. remember that where'd you say turn yeah. of the century they're like okay. do you remember before 9 11 how they we didn't have airport we security and they would even let you they would let you fly the plane do you remember that you remember the first yeah. person to get on the plane got to fly it and, and you if had you were to be polite at the gate yeah and if you were mean at the gate you had to fly the next one every guy wore a suit with a fedora and all the women dressed up and all the non-binaries rode the train and all the non-binaries Binaries didn't exist yet because the devil hadn't invented Be them. Because the vaccines. I don't oh, know. fuck. Um, anyway, fuck. but no, this book is about martyrs, right? It's yeah, it's all called about Jesus the Freaks. Who, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so it is. It's a book about martyrdom. And I still remember some of the stories. They're like burned in my brain. And some of them are like really old school. I mean, they have stories of the disciples and their martyrdom, which we like don't really know about it's just church tradition um yeah. so we don't fucking it's just know kind of but, fun. It's like but a fun little side then it quest. like it goes all the way up to even today and i believe i don't know if this is correct i believe that columbine was even in there and so like they were oh. they were putting in some some stories oh. and so there's like i remember i'll tell you one was this guy they're in this they're in this prison and they're gonna burn them alive like that's that's sure. what they're gonna do to these christians and the guy like the guy that, by the way it would be bad i don't want it either there was one guy who was like they're both praying and one guy was like really scared and the other one was pretending not to be i guess and so he told him like do you think it's gonna hurt and he's like i think god will i think he'll 
give us like relief. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I think he'll protect us. And he's like, here's what I'll do. I'm going first. If God gives me relief, like if I'm not in pain, I'll like raise my hands up and clap so that you'll know that like God will be with you and he'll help us in this moment. Right. So the guy gets tied up. He's burning alive. It obviously burns the ropes off, which at that point run away, dude. Um, yeah. so <laughs> he could still get away. He, he lifts his arms up the way the book describes it. I'm a child reading this. The way the book describes it is that he lifts his hands up. His fingers are falling off I hate and happens. begins to clap. And instead of clapping once, he claps like three or four times so to show like, look, no, it's really cool. And then yeah. he died, which I think obviously looked like God didn't help him. By the way, what a bullshit way to help him. Like God's like, look, I'm going to let you burn alive. I'm just going to make yeah. it hurt less. Like, hey, how about just don't let us burn alive, motherfucker? Like, why don't you open the prison doors? You did that because in the Bible. They- because they did stuff wrong. They That's didn't a good point. I didn't, I didn't consider that. They didn't anyway, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God w- wasn't going to burn them or whatever. It was that book and talking about martyrdom was what we talked about all the time. And yeah. it was like the highest thing. But basically what we had internalized was that if we're not being mistreated, then mm-hmm. we're not good Christians. If people don't hate us because of our faith that we're not good Christians. I want you to think about that for a second because all we knew were Christians. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if I was certain that anyone in my life didn't even go to church. I mean, obviously there were people at school who didn't, but I don't even know if I knew that they didn't. But the, well, the couple that we knew weren't going to church. We knew them. Like we knew, right. They were the the cautionary tale. Right. Yeah. They were the cautionary tale. And so Those imagine non Jesus freaks. Those are just regular. Ima- you're, you're surrounded by churchgoers and you, but you need to be persecuted. A nightmare. Yes. Um, yeah, it is. It is today. So Drew, I, I want to show you, I found this. I TikTok figured out a way this, to do that. I figured out a way to be surrounded by church people, but also be persecuted. Be gay. Be gay. Yeah. It was easy. Yeah, be gay. That's true. Actually, is that what you were doing? You were like, I'm going to be the most like Jesus. I'm going to hang out with only dudes and I'm going to get everyone Mm -hmm. to hate me. And then I'm going to have someone stab me in the side. (laughs) That's what gays are into? Side stabbing, huh? I'm open to it. Listen, once you get Um, to be my age and you've done it You've tried everything. You've done it Mm -hmm. all. It's time for a new hole. I found this video of this pastor. It's everything we're talking about. And I have some ideas. I I think he perfectly illustrates every idea I have about the persecution complex that Christians have, the problem with it, the motivations behind it. Well, the problem is that they're being persecuted. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So we're going to, we're going to try to get, I'll probably pause it a lot. We can yell, but I do have some thoughts, uh, some summary thoughts. So share the screen. Sam Cruz, a friend of mine, just became a Twenty Window patron. Hi, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. He's really Adrian, nice. Can I can I do can I tell you something too that's distracting like this? Yeah. One of the pastors from my former church in Memphis, his daughter, reached out this okay. past week. She has recently left the church and and left her faith. She had this great podcast. It's on hi- hiatus at the moment. It's kind of a pop culture thing, but she talked about why she left the church and everything. And part of it is she's always been really progressive. She's always been gay affirming and egalitarian and all that. But then her daughter is queer. And obviously that would cause some tension in that church. She's she great. Should just do what my mom did. What's that? If you have a queer daughter, don't think about it. Go to it church. It works. Just I mean, in one don't say anything. In, in one sense, it works. Anyway, it yeah. was cool like to hear from her to to have her reach out. We may we may That's even great. get her on a twin ten episode. She's Whoa. she's incredibly okay, smart. But if we do she's that, she's very funny. I'm not missing out on another conversation because I okay, have to we'll admit I didn't think the gay pastor Grant thing would be interesting, but it was. <laughs> and now I want in. I wanted to see it. Well, to see what it would uh, be. So Beth, if you're if you're watching this one, if you're listening, Beth, it's very oh, very Beth. good to have you Ooh, in the Twin Yendo verse. Yeah, she's great. You're gonna love her, and she's a phenomenal great. singer too, by the way. Well, I don't right. love that. She will. Yeah, she'll upstage you. All right, so here it is. Have you been persecuted because of your faith? Watch this. When people persecute oh, you God. and lie about you, it's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's because you're doing everything. Wrong. <laughs> I can't even I can't even go six seconds. Did you catch what he just said? Yeah, people persecute you because you're doing everything right. So immediately 
it's if, if anyone's mistreating you, it's not because you're an asshole. It's because you're right. It's not because you're wrong. It couldn't possibly be because you're doing something wrong. It's because you're right. Oh, God. Here we go. All right, I'm going to make sure I got the right church. How many of you all have ever been persecuted because of your faith? I imagine every hand is up in that place right now. Every Excitedly hand. up. Excitedly up. And like, listen to how he describes the persecution. Oh, family members don't understand you. That's not persecution. Family members don't understand you. People talking about you in a cult, all that kind Maybe of stuff. Maybe you are. That ain't something wrong. That means everything right, baby. So, all right. So you're all being persecuted because people don't understand you. That's persecution. That sounds tough. That sounds really tough. And by the way, it's a symbol that you're right if your family members don't talk to you anymore. All right. Okay, okay. Watch this. If you have never been persecuted because of your faith, Maybe, just maybe, your light ain't shining bright enough. Oh, God. Because people misunderstanding you, ridiculing you, and insulting you because of your love for Jesus. Your faith is mm -hmm. not valid unless you're being mistreated. So, like, it's training you to be an asshole. Like, it's absolutely yeah. training you to be an asshole. And then, and, and like, so, and then it puts all of this pressure on you. I've got to act out. I've got to be bolder. Fuck you, man. I hate okay, that. Okay, but, okay. But uh, Wait, let, let me explain say? something okay. to you, yep. Grant. You, yep. uh, love and hate are horns on the same goat, as Alice and Janney said in that movie, The Help, that we probably shouldn't have celebrated as much as we did. And I think That's when your I saw hatred Emma Stone in for person this, was when she was your hatred that for this, this mm -hmm. Grant, mm -hmm. I didn't hear what you said because I've been thinking about what I was thinking about. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> You hate it, but this thing that you hate about two years ago, this clip would have made you come. This would have been your foreplay. You would have said, Ange, no. I've got the perfect TikTok. Get the butt plug. Mm -mm, Let's mm -mm. get it. Mm -mm. Let's get first it. First off, first off, I handle my own butt plugs. Okay? You don't know our oh, dynamic. Sure. Wow. Um, I'm learning I'm always lot. ready to go, and it is yeah, Bluetooth. Sure. But he also says on here, Drew, because of your love for Jesus, you're hated because of your love for Jesus. No one fucking hates anybody because they love Jesus in America. No one in America is like, oh, you love Jesus? Fuck you, buddy. Like, no one's doing that. You're not hated because you love Jesus. You're hated because you're an asshole, because you're hateful towards other people. Anyway, sorry. All right, let's keep going. I've been hated for loving Jesus. I mean, I pronounced it Jesus, but we only dated it. for a few weeks. I knew what was I knew what was happening there. That was that's a good one. It's normal. And we need to normalize persecution normalize as if something strange is happening to us. Ain't nothing strange happening to me. That means that I'm anointed. That means I got favor. That means greater is he that is in me than he that... Ain't nothing wrong with this, baby. Everything is right with it. But watch what it says. It says, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, Jesus. you falsely, say all evil against you because of me. And then it gives us the attitude to have. So the people Jesus is talking to about persecution in this moment, he's not fucking talking to Americans who are all majority Christian. He's talking to his disciples who majority died because of their faith. That's who he's talking to. So he's not talking to you. This isn't written to you. And if you like more information about how the Bible wasn't written to you, watch the latest Grant's Bible Corner. He Wink. says, rejoice right, and be sorry. glad. Oh, <laughs> Some of y'all get mad and sad. You ain't thinking nothing about rejoicing and being glad. It says, have joy. It's basically yeah. what it means. Because great is your reward in heaven. Listen For to this in part. the same way they persecuted the prophets that were before you. So you hear what he said? In the same way. Yeah. That's what Jesus said. Because like your reward's great in heaven because in the same way that they persecuted the prophets before you, that's how they're going to treat you. Do you know what they did to the prophets before them? Any clue? No. They fucking killed them. They fucking killed oh, them. They ostracized sucks. them. They tortured them. They, they killed them. Yeah. Hey, American Christians, no one's killing you for being a Christian. You're not like the prophets. When you, like oh, Christians, when you hear those words of Jesus and go, no one's dying because I'm a Christian, then he's not fucking talking to you. He's not talking to you. So stop it. And it's so, it's unbelievably insulting. All right, Drew, let me give you some thoughts, and then I want to hear your thoughts. I'm fired up. I'm sorry. This I makes can tell. Mad. No, I'm, I'm enjoying it. This the is so persecution much com complex is so hateful to people who are actually fucking persecuted. 
It's so hateful yeah. because persecution is happening. Nowhere in this clip and nowhere in any of the other clips that I found that I didn't show you because I love you too much to make put you through what I've been through by watching this shit. Oh, None of them you. mentioned China. None of them mentioned Cuba or North Korea or Vietnam where Christians are actually persecuted. They're cosplaying persecution while real Christians are out there being persecuted. By the way, fine. You know what? That's so far away. I'm not thinking about China. Fine. Think about marginalized people groups in America right now because Christians, you aren't marginalized. Think about the people in our country right now who are marginalized and are mistreated, who are losing rights and are actually the things that you think are going to happen to you or you're pretending are going to happen to you in these TikToks. There are people out there it's actually happening to. There are trans people it's actually fucking happening to right like there there are uh, i'm assuming some gay people i don't know drew's got it pretty sweet nothing bad's ever happened to him but there are marginalized people groups that are your neighbors motherfucker and the bible says to do what to your neighbor to love your neighbor but instead of loving your neighbor who actually fucking needs your help you're over here going i'm just being persecuted man i'm just being persecuted right that like the good you know the story of the good samaritan drew i'm sure you do yeah, but tell me the- again. Tell me with this anger. I like it. <laughs> the story of the Good Samaritan Jesus teaches is this Jewish man gets the shit kicked out of him by these robbers. And Bummer. then a priest comes by. A Levite comes by, who's another name for someone who works in the temple. So another priest, if you will. They come by. They don't help him. But a Samaritan comes by and helps him. And the story is supposed to illustrate what? The Samaritans and the Jews hated each other. They were constantly like fucking with each other. The Jews would burn down the Samaritans' places of worship. The Samaritans would take like animal bones and put them in the temple because it would defile the temple and then the Jews couldn't use it. Which is kind of a funny thing to do is what it sounds like. Because it seems like harmless. Bones it seems are like funny. Right, bones yeah, are you funny. can clean it up. You can clean it up. But anyway, so Jesus was telling the story of like, you know, the person who was the real neighbor and the person who really showed love was not the Levite or the priest. It wasn't the church people. It was your enemy. It was like the worst person you could possibly think of. And Christians hear that story and they always see themselves in the Samaritan. Oh, I'm the Samaritan. No, you idiot. You missed the whole point of the story. You're the Levite. You're the priest. You're the one who walked by because you're more concerned with your schedule than you were with the person who needed your actual help, right? And that's like, it's, I'm sorry, it's incredibly frustrating to me, right? That Christians would cosplay persecution. You know, you know who doesn't do that? Fucking minorities who are actually persecuted. Trans people don't don't pretend like, you know, one day when my rights are taken away, I'm going to I'm going to dance with a trans flag on. No, they don't fucking do that because it's not a joke. It's real. But where are Christians on that? They're making videos pretending to be persecuted rather than helping the people who are actually persecuted. That's my TED talk. I have more. Do you have thoughts on that? I don't want to keep going. No, that was that was great. And you clearly needed to get it out. And I'm glad that we could be here for you. If anything, what I want to say is good job us. Good job me and audience for giving Grant this space. (laughs) Also, if you took out the fuck parts and the positive trans parts, that did kind of sound like your preacher voice for a little bit, especially when you got, when you said motherfucker, that was replace motherfucker with give 10%. And that was Grant's preacher voice. Give me 10%. That was, your... I mean, you did get fired up. I did hear a little bit of Pastor Grant come out. Wow. I appreciate it. That was triggering for me personally. I, I have a couple of other thoughts. If you don't have no, real I want to keep here. going. Shut up. My turn. Go ahead. You are the persecuted one here. Truly. No, I agree. I'm not. I agree with you, Grant. It's something that, honestly, okay, I'll be totally for real, that it's something I've always shook my head at. It's something I've always also angrily responded to, of just like, ugh, you're not persecuted. Like, grow the fuck up. Like, what is the deal? It really wasn't until the beginning of this podcast when you asked, so growing up in the church, like, what what do you remember about persecution? I was like, well, yeah, that we, we celebrated it. I truly did not connect that that is something that, like, we're trained to be. I 
don't know why it just completely yeah I, I i see those videos and i i do the same thing you do i go into my preacher voice and i roll my eyes <laughs> and i tell my wife that i don't need her help with the butt plug i can do it on my own angela exactly but, and i'm not mad at her she's trying to help she's trying to help my butt plugs she's just uh, listen she's trying to keep the marriage alive but she yeah, really I, is. I, I feel so dumb, but I had not put that together that like, yeah, they probably watch these videos in church and are like, brave, 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 brave. OK, go and ahead. It, you can. And it's back. that Future. it's that stupid that the thing that he said that is one of the most offensive things he said was they hate you because you love Jesus. No one hates you because you love Jesus. They, they hate you because you're hateful because you're an asshole. I was, um, well, I don't know if I've told you, Jude on his basketball team has a teammate who's trans, just transitioned. Really? So, yeah. So he has a teammate. Wow. Like a 13 year old? Yes. Yeah. 12 or 13. That, yeah, wow. yeah. He was on his team last season and had not transitioned. And so when he came back, he had transitioned and it didn't. Like, let me just tell, by the way, all the Republicans that are watching, I know we have so many of you. Thank all you of so you much GOPers, for watching. Get thank you so vote. much for watching. It's so important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or don't, or don't vote. But vote twice. It, for all of you watching, my son and the other kids on the team didn't fuck them up at all. They didn't miss, like their first practice, they're like, hey, this is a new name, new name mm -hmm. now, and pronouns are he, him. That was that. There was no conversation about it. Like, I asked Jude about it. I was like, hey, wasn't wasn't he on your team before? And he's, oh, yeah, he transitioned is his name now. It wasn't a thing. Like, he wasn't even going to tell me about it if I hadn't said anything about it. So, so GOPers, you're like, you're afraid of all that shit? Like, sh shut the fuck up. You're not afraid. Kids so anyway, aren't afraid. Grow up. We went to that game and we, again, saw Jude play with his new teammate and then later i see this commentator this political commentator who was talking about tampons in boys Tampon bathrooms Tim. hell yeah and how it's confusing boys away from how god had designed them to be i was furious i was so pissed like fuck you man like you're using this kid. We're not talking about, I know he is because he doesn't know anyone who's trans. We're not talking about some idea of like, you know, well, this could mess kids up and this is a philosophical thing. No, no, no. If that little boy goes to his bathroom, because we're talking about a child, goes to his school bathroom and has his period and completely didn't see it coming and is not prepared, what you're saying is, because God did design, because my beliefs, you're gonna leave this kid, you're gonna give this kid the worst day of his life, you're not gonna give him any support because you're worried it's gonna, it's gonna do something to these other boys. I was a little boy. We would have taken those pads and stuck them on our foreheads or something. It wouldn't yep. have been a, like, it, I wouldn't have been like, oh, should I have a vagina? Like, it, it wouldn't have fucked us up. That's the, and, that's the only thing I think about when they talk about tampons and boys' bathrooms is we couldn't have paper towels in our bathrooms yeah. because the boys would get them wet and throw them on the ceiling. Like the only yeah. thing boys are thinking about when they see tampons in their bathroom is how do I throw this somewhere? How do I destroy this? How do I hurt someone I'm gonna with put it? this in my nose. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put, it's, yes. It has yeah. nothing to do with like, well, I don't have that hole. Oh God, I guess I better get one. Like, so, so fuck? exactly. So yeah. Hey, Christians, what you're doing, the reason we hate you is and not thank you because for being you love patrons, Jesus. Christians, by the way, it's because you thank don't you so love these trans kids. That's why I hate you. It's because you're taking this sweet little boy and you're making him fodder for your political beliefs that are so intertwined with your religious beliefs that they're the same thing. And so like, that's why I fucking hate you. And I'm not talking to all Christians. I'm talking about the ones who would use this little boy as their political mascot or whatever. No, this is a real person. If my child were, were in that situation, I want them to have all of the support they need. I don't want someone to, to push their religious views on them and to use them as a pawn to get whatever the fuck they want. Like, we're talking about kids. What the fuck is wrong with you? So no one hates you because you love Jesus. We hate you because you don't love other people. That's why we hate you. If you were loving to trans kids, no one would hate you, you moron. If you were loving to vulnerable people, by the way, trans kids are killing themselves. 
Can we say that? Can we say that like the suicide rates among trans kids is insanely high? Christians, do you care about that? Do you care about that? No, you've got no, to film your stupid don't. little TikToks and hold your Bible like, ooh, 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 like, shut the fuck up. Like, if you want to help these kids, okay, you don't want to give them tampons, give them mental health support then, you motherfuckers. I think we need more guns in schools. <laughs> the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Thanks for listening, everybody. Or a good kid with a gun. We never talk about <sighs> arming the good kids, do You're we? You're talking about the cisgendered ones. Yeah, the Those ones the that were born kids. with their guns, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, Grant, I have to say, as someone who grew up with you and has known your way of life for years, I am moved by those words. I'm so happy and relieved to hear you angry, so, so fired up about it. No, it's nice. I mean, you, for almost 40 years, you lived this insanely Christian-centric life. And for you to have not only left, but to have, but to have put yourself aside to consider who you might have been leaving out then, or how those people may have been hurt people that you you don't know that you directly hurt but perhaps some words you have said you know help with that hurt and the fact that you're unpacking it in such a, a fevered way is just really it's really nice as as a queer that. well i'm not giving you compliments because you should have been okay. doing this from the beginning but okay i don't appreciate no but that, as a then. queer person like the the vitriol that Christians and far-right Republicans throw at queer people in general, but especially queer kids, it requires, it will require and does require straight people, straight moms and dads being this upset to fight it. Because unfortunately, your opinion holds more weight to them, holds more value to them, because you at least look like what they expect all couples to look like you know yeah and i will promise you right now that i will always use my platform for myself the other side of this that's got me so upset is not just christians who spew vitriol towards these children these vulnerable people is not just the people who who spew vitriol it's the people who don't care who just like who like these people like that pastor has a fucking platform and instead of talking about the most vulnerable people around you, you're in you're putting inside these Christians this idea that you're the hero because that's what a, that's what a, a martyr complex is, is that I'm important. The, uh, so I was looking up quotes from that Jesus Freaks book. And in the intro, there's a quote that says something like it only takes one Jesus Freak to stand up to change a generation. And so, like, what is that about? It's putting you at the center of the story, which is the complete opposite of what Christianity is supposed to be about. It's the complete opposite of the teachings of Jesus. The teachings of Jesus are about forgetting about yourself and putting the needs of the, your neighbors in front of you. And who's my neighbor? That's when he told the Good Samaritan story. Someone said, who's my neighbor? And he's like, every fucking body is your neighbor. And that's what's so infuriating, too, is that they will, they'll put themselves in that place. So rather than getting the attention to the people who need it the most, to the people who are actually marginalized, they put themselves in that position. Like, look at me. I'm a victim. Fuck you, man. No, you're not. I always want to leave with something helpful. Like, what can you do for people in your lives who are Christians like this, who have this persecution mm. complex? And I really thought about it. And here's what it is. Persecute them. That's what they want. They'll love it. They'll come. Yeah. Do it for them. Be a giver. They love it. Persecute. They love it. Text a Christian in your life right now and say, I hate you because you love Jesus. They will. One of my, one of my best they'll orgasms nut so ever. fast. They'll go blind. Truly. It's one that I still talk about over 20 years later is when I was in an argument with my long distance boyfriend on the phone and I'm walking mm -hmm. up and down the hallway and I'm so mad. We're arguing. I don't remember what it was about. I think he was sleeping with one of his students. He was a high school teacher at the time. And so Fuck. we're arguing. Yeah, you're the worst and stories. I I look down and I realize, oops, I came. I was so <laughs> mad that as I was walking up and down this long hallway that I shared with other people, by the way. Is this I a real story? I, Are you? Yeah. Ki you're kidding. You're joking. No, 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 no. This Shut is very up. real. No, that it's I not. Was pushing yeah that i was pushing on my stuff and um because you were mad yeah i was so mad i came ah 
Make a Christian so mad they come. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. I don't know what to do with that. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. It's true. I still have those genes. As we end, Drew, just a couple of things as I scroll the names of our patrons over your face. Um, oh, sure. Thank you, patrons, for being there for us. I just released a new Grant's Bible Corner on there. Check it out. We are about to post a date for our live stream, our first live stream, which is going to be October 30th. That's a Wednesday. And we are going to have it at 2 o'clock Pacific or five mm-hmm. o'clock Eastern if you're if you're nasty. It's gonna be our All Hallows Eve Fall Fest. We're gonna do thing. Fall Fest um, trunk or treat. So yeah, like all come dressed as a Bible character or an animal. I'm Those going to tell you choices. about and Drew, I'm sure will as well about judgment houses um, and hell houses. Mm. Oh my god, them. I yeah. love them. I love them. There's still one. There's one that they do. It's like 45 minutes away, and I want to go so so bad. Um, I I would love to go to a judgment house. I mean, I'm close come, to Orange County ish. I should go to Orange come County. Come here. Sure they have them. Oh yeah. They no thanks. Do that. I don't want to. So yeah, I'm okay. so excited well, about that too. Hey kids, Uncle so, Drew still doesn't want to come see you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Don't. I don't. Yeah. It's a live. It's going to be a live event. So if you're live and you're Olson, we'll see you there. Well, they talk to us via chat. Sorry, I've never done this before brother yeah okay yeah, so, so we can interact with them okay yeah perfect yeah what we record perfect. on will have like a live chat window thank you guys so much thanks for listening sorry i got a little heated i got a little upset it was great and, oh i loved um, it it makes me want to hurt a trans person is that oh, what you were trying say, to get me to do no trans lives matter that's what i was trying oh. to say trans lives matter oh. uh tell a christian you hate them they love it tell a trans person you love them they need it all right everybody whoa goodbye Goodbye.